One of the most common questions about CRT is how to choose the right candles. This video offers a comprehensive answer to that question. By watching it in its entirety, without skipping, you'll see a significant and precise enhancement in your trading or CRT models. You'll gain complete clarity and confidence in selecting CRT correctly. That's my guarantee to you. A quick side note, I do want to shout out Sham or Speculator for the video idea, and also Romeo for shedding light on CRT and Turtle Soup. Also, if you'd like to keep up to date with my daily trades, follow me on Twitter or join my Telegram. Okay, now let's get into the video. Selecting CRT correctly. There are two types of methods for selecting your CRT. One is Confirmational CRT, and the other is advanced CRT. Before I explain both, I want to emphasize that most of you should focus predominantly on confirmational CRT and from now, forget about advanced. The reason is that, as the name suggests, confirmational CRT has a confirmational aspect to it, making it more suitable for you. It will increase your margin better compared to advanced CRT. Once you become more experienced and have more chart time, you can learn about advanced CRT and how to use it effectively. At that point, it will be more beneficial. However, for now, focusing on confirmational CRT is the right decision. Now let me explain the characteristics of each one to you. The first point to consider is confirmational CRT. As mentioned earlier, you should primarily focus on this type of CRT, and here's why. One key aspect is that it must follow all protocols. While it doesn't need to adhere to every single one, it should follow at least two or three. If it doesn't meet at least two protocols, it should not be used. Next, you will only trade the third candle in this CRT. This means waiting for the second candle to close before trading the CRT candle. This step provides confirmation, hence the name confirmational CRT. The closure of the second candle is crucial. If it closes inside the CRT, it is considered high probability, provided it follows the protocols. If it closes above or below the CRT, the probability decreases. A lot of people think you can't enter the trade if it closes outside, but this just isn't true. It doesn't become invalid, but you should reduce your risk if it closes below or above. This approach involves trading only the third candle and waiting for the second candle to close. It is a simpler version of CRT because you wait for confirmation before trading, making it easier than advanced CRT types. This is why most of you should focus on this type of CRT. Trade the CRT only after confirmation, which forms after the second candle closes. Ignore the first and second candles, wait for them to close. Then, perform a top-down analysis on the higher time frame and lower time frames to check if the CRT follows its protocols. Once confirmed, you can trade it on the lower time frames. Focusing solely on the CRT type will significantly improve your accuracy. With confirmation before trading, you'll see a clear improvement in your CRT models, enhancing both accuracy and precision. The second type of CRT is the advanced CRT. As I mentioned before, you should forget about it for now because it requires more experience, more chart analysis, and more intuition. Let me explain the key aspects of it. First, it must follow the protocols, meaning it must follow at least two or three of them. This advanced version of CRT, as the name suggests, involves trading the CRT before confirmation. When trading this CRT, you won't have any confirmation, making it a more challenging version. That's why I do advise against trading this type of CRT if you're starting. Instead, wait for confirmation, and then you can trade both the second and third candle. This type of CRT requires more skill and intuition. 
If you are a beginner or intermediate student, it's best to forget about advanced for now. So these are the two types of CRT, the conformational CRT and the advanced CRT. This video's main focus will be on conformational CRT. The reason for this is that most of you are either beginners, intermediates, or semi-advanced students. It's better for you to concentrate on conformational CRT alone. You can transition to advanced CRT once you gain enough experience and intuition from chart time. However, for now, the best decision is to focus solely on conformational CRT. There's nothing wrong with this approach, it actually has one of the best options. Focusing on conformational CRT alone is more than enough to make you consistent and profitable. I can promise that. Okay, now let's discuss the protocols for CRT. As I mentioned before, every CRT must follow at least two or three, or ideally four protocols. If it doesn't follow at least two protocols, you shouldn't use that CRT and should dismiss or disregard it. For a CRT to be considered correct, it must follow at least two or three protocols. Some of the most important protocols for CRT are as follows. A lower time frame CRT within a higher time frame CRT, which could be in the form of a big bulgy candle or a big CRT. Out of this list, this is one of the most important ones. I'll explain each one in detail, but for now, we'll just name them. Another protocol is the timing of CRT, which refers to when the CRT is formed. Additionally, we do have the timing of the purge of the CRT. This is crucial, meaning at what time the purge actually happens. This is also very important. Another key protocol is that there must be a higher time frame PDRA around the CRT and a lower time frame refined PDRA around it. These are some of the CRT protocols that you should look for to find the correct CRT. Okay, now before I actually explain the CRT protocols to you, let me give you a brief introduction to the time frame alignment. Now I know that some of you are asking on Twitter for me to discuss the time frame alignment and time alignment. This is a very important topic, so I am going to make sure to make another separate in-depth video about it too. But for now, let me give you a brief introduction to it. Okay, so in front of you, you can see some important time frame alignments for CRT. Let me explain them to you now. If you're using the first protocol, which involves using the lower time frame CRT within the higher time frame CRT, here's how it works. If you're using the weekly, the monthly should be used as your higher time frame CRT. Similarly, if you're using the daily as the lower time frame, then your higher time frame should be the weekly, and so on. On the right hand side, if you have chosen the monthly as your higher time frame CRT, your entries should be on the daily. If you've chosen the daily as your higher time frame CRT, then your entries should be either on the 1R or the 2R. For using the 4R time frame as your high time frame CRT, you will be using your 15 minute chart as the low time frame entry. This is what we call time frame alignment. You might want to pause this video and take notes because this is one of the most important topics in ICT and CRT concepts. So, the first protocol involves using a lower time frame CRT within a higher time frame CRT. This is an important protocol because it offers some of the strongest CRT signals. To apply this method, start by examining the higher time frame CRT candle with the help of time frame alignment. Wait for the higher time frame CRT to show a significant shift, then move to the lower time frame. Look for a large notable candle that has broken through the CRT high or low. If such a candle is present, it indicates a high probability CRT setup. This type of CRT 
often provides reliable results with at least a 50% success rate. By studying your charts with this protocol, you'll notice that many significant tops and bottoms were formed using this logic. In summary, the protocol involves waiting for the higher time frame CRT to be breached, then looking on the lower time frame for a substantial candle that has breached the CRT high or low. This lower time frame CRT will then be used to target the opposing end of the range. It's a simple but highly effective approach. Here's another example of this protocol. Observe a higher time frame CRT where the low of the CRT was breached. On the lower time frame, the breach was marked by a large candle. This makes it a lower time frame CRT setup. We then wait for the lower time frame CRT to be purged and target the opposite end of the range, which is exactly what occurred in this example. You should study this CRT method as much as possible. It's one of the most significant approaches in CRT trading. Another crucial CRT protocol is the timing of the CRT formation. As the name suggests, it is based on time. We need to observe the CRT being formed at specific key times. If it doesn't form at these designated times, we will disregard it. This protocol is effective in filtering out less accurate and less precise CRTs that form at random times. The key times for CRTs include the following. For the weekly range, the highest probability CRTs are typically formed on Mondays and Fridays. On Monday, a large prominent candle forms and then the price, either on Tuesday or Wednesday, will test the high or low of that CRT. For the rest of the week, the price will expand higher or lower to reach the opposite end of the range. A similar pattern is observed with the Friday CRT. For intraday ranges or 4 hour CRTs, the times include 5 p.m., 9 p.m., 1 a.m., 5 a.m., and 9 a.m. You do have Sham's 3 a.m. model, which has been shared on his channel and on his Twitter, which relies on the 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. CRTs. Now, the 5 p.m. CRT candle aligns with the CBDR, and the 9 p.m. aligns with the Asian range, which is why it's highly effective. I did also share my 9 a.m. model, if you want to learn more about it, check out my recent video. As mentioned earlier, the highest probability CRTs are formed at specific days of the week and specific times of the day. With CRT and ICT concepts, time is of greater importance than price. Therefore, priority should always be given to time over price. By using this CRT protocol, you can filter out low probability CRTs from your trading. Combining it with other protocols will significantly increase your profitability. Another important CRT protocol is the timing of the purge. With this type of CRT, we not only wait for the CRT to form at a specific time, but also for its purge to occur at a key time. If the timing of the purge is not correct, we disregard that CRT. This is known as time alignment. Time alignment involves using these two protocols together, ensuring that both the formation and the purge of the CRT happen at the designated times. By waiting for both events to align, we enhance the accuracy and effectiveness of our trading strategy. Here, we have some important time alignments. This is different from time frame alignment, where we align different time frames. In time alignments, we align different times for the timing of the CRT and the timing of the purge of the CRT. For example, if the CRT is formed in week one of the month, you wait for the high probability purge to occur in week two. Similarly, if the CRT is formed on Monday, you wait for the purge on Tuesday or Wednesday. If you're using the 5pm or 9pm CRT, 
the high probability purge occurs at 3 a.m. and so on. There are other examples as well, which I have covered on Twitter. These alignments are not absolute, and are not the only ones. There are many more time alignments that you can use, which you can find by backtesting different time alignments. For instance, you can wait for the CRT to form at certain times, and then look to see when these purges occur. Note these times, and check your data to see if there's a recurring theme or pattern. You can then use these time alignments for yourself. Other good purge times that I will mention now are 1 a.m., 3 a.m., 6 a.m., and between 8 and 10 a.m. It's up to you to study this on your own and find the perfect or suitable time alignment for yourself. I've given you a few examples here, but as I said before, these are not the only ones. There are many others that exist, and you should find them on your own through studying and backtesting. Another important CRT protocol is the high time frame PDRA. Although it is a bit cliche, it's very important. It's meant to be boring, which is why we continuously use it. The high time frame CRT acts as a catalyst for an expansion higher in the opposite direction. Some of the most important CRTs use this protocol. To effectively filter out low probability CRTs and select only high quality ones, combine all the protocols I've shown you. Using all these protocols together allows you to select CRTs correctly and ensure their high probability. The high time frame PDRA can come in two forms, the inside PDRA and the outside PDRA. You can clearly see examples of the difference between the two of them. One type is when the, P One type is when the CRT has tested the PDRA and the other is when the CRT hasn't tested it. But the purge of the CRT occurs in the second candle and tests the PDRA. Out of these two, the highest probability CRT is the outside PDRA because only the second candle of the CRT range tests the PD. This makes it a high probability CRT with the high time frame PDRA acting as a catalyst for price expansion higher. As I mentioned before, you're going to combine all of these protocols and use them together. This way, you'll end up with a higher probability CRT. In this example, we can see that on the higher time frame, we have one CRT, and on the lower time frame, we have another. The protocols being followed include a lower time frame CRT within a higher time frame CRT. We can observe that there is a PDRA around the CRT on the lower time frame, which takes the form of an order block. Additionally, the timing of the CRT is also correct, meaning the CRT has formed at the right time. This can be seen on the chart. Also, the purge of that CRT happened at the right time, which is why the CRT on the lower time frame was high probability. Now, I've explained every important protocol to you, but the video doesn't end here. The most crucial part is yet to come. I'm going to explain how you can use these protocols to find and trade the conformational CRT, which is the main focus of this video. However, before we dive deeper, let me clarify some key points. Don't try to randomly guess CRTs. I see people on Twitter and other platforms selecting and guessing different CRT candles and they're doing it randomly. This is not the correct approach. If you guess CRTs randomly, it won't work for you. Instead, use the protocols to find the CRT accurately. Another mistake people make is trading the CRT without confirmation. This is one of the worst things that you can do. You need to wait for confirmation to occur, then wait for the second candle to close before you trade the CRT. Focusing on this step alone will significantly increase your accuracy. You can then trade the third candle on the lower time frame 
using the sequence, which essentially involves Model 1 entries and KOD entries. Now let me give you some examples. This is one of the most important parts of this video because I'm going to teach you how to use the knowledge and theory I've given you in the live markets. On the left side, we've got this price action and a candle. You might not know whether to trade this candle, whether it has been considered a valid CRT, or whether you should use it at all. This means that you're in doubt or have some confusion. To resolve this, you'll do a top-down analysis and use the protocols I've provided. Look for these protocols in the markets and check if the candle follows at least two or three of them to be considered correct. Next, wait for the second candle to close inside the CRT. If it closes outside, you can still use it, but it will be a lower probability CRT, so you'll need to decrease your risk. If it closes inside the CRT, then that would be optimal. When the second candle closes, it confirms your CRT as correct. You can then trade the rest of the candles or the third candle of the CRT, targeting the 50% of the range and the opposing end of the range. It really is as simple as that. Look for the protocols, wait for the second candle to close, and only then trade the CRT. Here we've got another example with this price action and this candle. You don't know if this candle can be considered as a correct CRT or not, so again, following the same steps repeatedly, you'll look for the first protocols. After confirming that it has at least two or three of the protocols, you'll wait for one side of the CRT to be purged, and then the candle to close inside the CRT. Once it closes inside the CRT, and follows all of these protocols, it confirms your CRT. It then becomes a valid confirmational CRT for you and you can trade the third candle of the CRT or the rest of the candles, targeting the opposing end of the range. Here's another example we've got. This candle right here, you're not sure whether it can be considered as a CRT correctly. So what you're going to do is wait for one side of the CRT to be purged and then for the price to close inside the CRT. Once the second candle closes, you're going to trade the third candle and target the opposing end. It's basically as simple as that. There really is no rocket science behind it. You're just going to use all of the protocols and then wait for one side of the CRT to be purged and the candle to close inside the CRT. Then you're going to trade the rest of the candles of that particular CRT. In this example, you can see that the CRT has taken a low. Once the low of that CRT was purged, it also tested an order block here, and then the candle closed above, which confirms our CRT. This makes it a confirmational CRT, and our objective is to trade the rest of the candles. Here's another case study for you. You can see that the CRT is tested in an order block. The timing of that CRT is 5am, which makes it a high probability CRT. Additionally, the timing occurred at a key time, which is 9am. The second candle closed above, and that's basically it. We trade the rest of the candles after that. Traders, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to select high probability CRT candles. I upload an indicator video every Wednesday, and an ICT Concepts video every Sunday. We're currently in the middle of a 10 video series on candle range theory. Traders, I hope you understood this trading strategy. If you have any interesting ideas or any questions, please write them down in the comments. Be sure to backtest this or any other trading strategy you find on Flames and Trading. Once you are satisfied with the backtesting results, be sure to forward test your favourite strategy on a demo account. Only after that can you trade with it on a live account. If you haven't done so already, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel to not miss out on future content. As I said earlier, if you want to keep up to date with my daily trades, follow my Twitter or join my Telegram.
Thanks for watching. Till next time, happy trading.